welcome back to room 237 back with another review and this is another review of a horror film by a24 I uh, follow my channel you know I've been doing a bunch of a24 films both in and out of horror as a24 is my favorite modern film company uh, this is actually the last a24 film I have it's not the last one I'll be doing uh, I have a few more on order that I'm waiting to come in but for right now, for a few days, this is the last one I have. And this is one that I did not even know was A24. It's not even a film I knew about until I checked out the catalog and made the list of films to check out. And it's one from 2019, and it is The Hole in the Ground. Now, if you look around, you'll see that this has some pretty good reviews. I mean, there were reviews of people calling this the scariest movie of 2019. Uh, although, if I remember correctly, I think this, I mean, I don't even remember this movie coming out. I think it just kind of came out of nowhere, then quickly went away. Uh, this isn't really a movie, you see get talked about a lot, especially of A24, but 2019 was a pretty big year for horror, whether people like to admit it or not. Uh, no, I don't think Midsummer was one of them. As it did come out 2019, I mean, as far as the good ones. But, I mean, there was a slew of good horror films that came out that year. and Maybe this just got lost behind all that. But, uh, I was, of course, willing to check it out, A24. And I have to say, it's definitely not one of my favorites. Uh, this would be on my list of... Like, my bottom 10, like, least favorite or worst A24 horror films. However, even that being said, even their bad films are still pretty good. Um, I think of the 19 or 20 horror films I've seen of them, there's only one that I could actually say I dislike. So, and actually when I do my top 10 least favorite or worst, most of them I actually do enjoy. Uh, there's just not a whole lot to make a top 10 best and worst. There's only like a few more, but, uh, so yeah, most of that list will still be pretty good. And this one still is pretty good. Uh, it's nothing super original. It's stuff we've seen before. It, it pretty much delves into the creepy kid genre. Which actually, there's a ton of influences that kind of shine through with this. Uh, in fact, I think The Shining was one of the major influences. With opening shot over the trees and the car driving. I believe that the wallpaper pattern was modeled after The Shining carpet. But, I mean, there's... It's reminiscent of a number of horror movies. I mean, obviously, anyone with a creepy son is going to be compared to uh, The Omen. There's slight nods to, like, The Descent and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, stuff like that. So, but with A24, even when they do either an exhausted genre or a genre where... It's not quite exhausted, but there's not too many routes that you can go. They still find a way to make it feel somewhat fresh, or at least not just completely tired. And that's some credit that I, I do give this one was, I mean, uh, how many creepy kid horror movies are there? I, even in 2019, there was The Prodigy, which I thought sucked. I did a rant on that. I believe that was the year The Turning came out, which I don't think I saw. But, it, and even the kid in this, played by, oh, uh, James Cosbo. He looks a lot like Haley Joel Osment when he was young, so kind of a Sixth Sense type look. It, it does have strong atmosphere, though. The atmosphere is similar to some of the best Woods movies. I mean, like, I wouldn't quite say as strong as, strong as The Witch, but it does have some good atmosphere. Now, it was written and directed by Lee Cronin. It stars Shauna Kerslake, if I pronounce that correctly. James Cosmo, Simone Kirby, Steve Wall, James Quinn Markley. Uh, 
Tom Coverfield did, did the uh, cinematography and S Stephen McKeon did the music. I guess this is another one that I think similar to uh, Into the Forest, where it's not really an A24 production. It was just more so they distributed it, they got the rights to it, then they put it out. So, but that would also explain why it doesn't quite feel as much like an A24 film as some other ones. But... It is a better creepy kid movie than a lot of other ones that have come out recently. Oh, uh, so let's see. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting about the production or the release, but it's basically, you have the story of this mother played by Curse Lake, whose name is Sarah. You get the idea that she's running or hiding from some sort of abusive past like her husband the kid doesn't quite know the whole story about it and oh this is also a uh, irish film i believe it it takes i i believe it does take place in ireland but it doesn't strictly say it almost kind of has that feeling like halloween it could be anywhere but it does happen to be the irish countryside and so they move they move into this house and there's this giant sinkhole out in the woods and behind the house and slowly over time the son chris begins to more and more not act like himself and become more disturbing uh dark different uh, uh sinister and sarah starts starts to convince herself that this is not her son. He's been swapped or possessed by something. But there's also the story of this older couple with the crazy old lady that something similar happened to her some 20 years prior. And that's about as much as I can say before getting into spoilers. Because it, it does explain, obviously, at the end, but... Even what they show us, it doesn't fully explain what it is. I mean, I, I, I have looked it up just to be sure, but it doesn't come. It's not. It's not like it's a sinister or other horror movies where she gets like an old folklore book, looks up whatever this is, and we see it through exposition, which you could classify this as like a folk horror film, which. Uh, I've really been getting into folk horror. I still need to see A24's Lamb, which is pretty hard to get for whatever reason. But uh, apart from being very well shot, which this movie is, especially uh, all the outdoor shots, there's a lot of wide shots, tracking and swooping shots. Even the uh, title sequence with overhead watching the car drive. It like drives towards the camera and it goes like this so that when it completely goes around the whole shot's upside down that's pretty cool but it does do a good job at establishing the relationship between chris and sarah and all these little clues that show why she believes it's not her son you know a little like personality quirks or just things about him that are established in the beginning of the film like his fear of spiders or his disliking of a, a, a powder cheese or this game that they play where you know Chris doesn't want to finish his lunch she tells him to and they count three two one then they to make a funny face at each other whoever lasts first loses that's actually the that's the final straw where she realizes it's not uh her son so they do a good job at just establishing how close they are how they're kind of all that each other has and then all these the personality traits so that when he does start to change we as the audience pick up on it and that 
adds to the suspense as well when we see the changes because a lot of them are subtle like his fear of spiders and then uh, you look at the original poster there's one on his face that does come into play during a very creepy scene it's not a jump scare film which i highly appreciate uh i think the only real jump scare would be during a dream sequence yes this does have the fake out dream sequence that's kind of a tired cliche that never really works it's about as lazy as you know a jump scare but I'll say the dream sequence in this is done better than in most films I've seen. So it did do a good job at really building the suspense as we noticed the changes in him as well. But it's still kind of a creepy kid movie. It's stuff we've seen before. You know, he's basically just getting... Uh, well, he doesn't do stuff that you'd see in other movies like hurt animals or attack people. It it definitely makes it seem like he's more possessed by something. And it gets to the point where he's, you know, he does become more social, join the talent show, which the, the talent show scene was pretty, uh, I do like the way that was styled. And a lot of times when he is being creepy and it is like the other son, he's usually in the background out of focus, which kind of adds to the creepiness. But there's also a an angle where, you know, she's kind of fighting with herself. Like, okay, the, he's still got to be my son. Maybe it's something wrong with me. Like, she even goes to see the doctor. Like, is there something wrong? Like... Am, am I stressed? Am I kind of hinting that maybe she's projecting some of her uh, abusive or abuse trauma that she had? Is it kind of playing on the metaphor of living in fear, like someone who's in an abusive uh, relationship? It does play on that a bit as well. And it does have a good buildup. It and thankfully, it doesn't go that route of one, just constant jump scares, and two, kind of going the a Bagul route, where we just see her researching and finding out the name of what this, what it could possibly be, and then looking up how to study. It doesn't go that stupid route. One common complaint I have heard is a thing to do with the camera. Where after she notices doing something creepy in his bedroom, which is, it's not so much that that scene is creepy, but the one that follows is well done and creepy. Where she hears him doing stuff in his bedroom at night, and she looks under the crack of the door and sees a spider, and just sees his little hand kind of going after it, then grabs it. And then she sees him crawling around on all fours. Then she looks through the keyhole and sees him eating the spider. Which, yeah, that's still creepy and unsettling. But what's really creepy is what they do after. Where when she walks backwards, floor creaks. He calls out to her. And then she rushes back to her room. And he's walking around like, Bobby, where are you? And then just out of focus through the crack of her door, he's you just see him come in a frame. And he just says, like, good night, Bobby. As if to say, like, good night. Stay in there. Leave me alone. So that was well done. And he, I will say, when the kid, he always punctuates every sentence with Bobby. And the way he says it can be kind of annoying. Because he says it, it almost sounds like he's too old to be saying it. And he does say it kind of quickly. Almost like it doesn't fit. But, all right. Tiny nitpick. But after that, she, she puts a, a digital camera hidden in his room. And some people have complained that that's kind of a too tired uh, plot device or story element. You know, hidden camera, catch him doing something. But... And not only that, they've complained that because it's so much later in the film when she goes to retrieve it, that this thing's been recording nonstop. 
I think the simple explanation is she put it there and then just she retrieved it when she retrieved it. It's not like it was recording the entire time. So I, I think that was just kind of silly. But it, it does get darker as it goes along. Uh, I do like the, the moment where she finally says, yes, you are not my son. Uh, it does have the sort of creepy old lady cliche, like standing in the middle of the road, just kind of... And then, you know, seeing the son, like, just screeching, trying to get to him. Kind of like a Deborah Logan-looking uh, lady. Which is kind of a cliche. You're know, always standing in the middle of the road, almost hitting her. But it works for the plot. That's uh, what's happening to Sarah happened to her some 20-whatever years ago. There's not really too much more I can say without getting into spoilers, but... um. It, it definitely, <clears throat> it doesn't feel as much like an A24 film, maybe because it wasn't produced by them, only distributed. But even then, I mean, it, it is better and more well-made, well, well shot, written, acted. Uh, uh, even the kid actor can be creepy at times, and he did do well. Then, you know, other cre creepy, scary kid movies that came out around the same time. <clears throat> so it, it it does almost have that A24 quality, but not quite, not as good as other ones. But even so, even though it would be on my bottom 10 list, most on that list I still like very much, so... Can I recommend it? Sure. I mean, it, it's still a decent horror film. Uh, I can kind of see why it might have just been swept off and forgotten about in, in 2019 because there were a lot of good ones that came out that year. But, um, yeah, it's definitely not a bad movie. It's, it's probably just more straightforward, more generic, dare I say, than other A24 films. It definitely feels less like A24, like I said, but it's still decent, especially for how familiar the overall story is and even all the little kind of influences that kind of make it up, like The Shining, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, uh, uh, The Descent, The Omen. But it still does well as its own thing, so... Still decent, well-made, but now I'm going to get the spoilers. So, like as the movie goes on, another thing she realizes is he goes from not wanting to make friends and keep to himself, not wanting to join the talent show, to being more social, joining the talent show, not playing with his action figures, but, you know, all, sitting there combing his hair. There is the scene with the creepy kid singing to himself like he's combing his hair la 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 because of course you have to have that all the toys are perfectly organized which I guess neat and orderly is creepy even his Legos are organized in jars by color and everything there's this really cool scene during the talent show, where it's just like she's envisioning him different, so it's like his singing becomes isolated, slower, and angrier as he says the words. Then she just imagines her by herself in the audience, him by himself, kind of a, a very stylized, almost threatening kind of vision. But, oh, also, the old lady dies. She's found on the property with her head buried in the ground. I guess that's how these things kill people. Because we find that... I, I haven't really looked into it, and I'm sure people will tell me in very long comments explaining it to me. These things are called changelings, which, whatever they are, fairies, shapeshifters, whatever... 
there are these like faceless, almost Silent Hill creature looking things that do live deep in the tunnels beneath this sinkhole that do um, duplicate. Uh, that is what happened to the old ladies some years ago with her son. And when she finally finds out how they're not, how he's not her son, is earlier the doctor gives her some anxiety meds. And it doesn't show it, but it's implied through a couple shots how um, she emptied all the capsules into the powdered cheese. Makes him dinner. He just takes a bunch of it. Pours it over his food. And then she does that game with him. Where she counts down from three. And he just stares at her. You know, he, she says three. He doesn't say two. She says two. He doesn't say one. He still stares at it. Doesn't know what she's doing. And that's when she says. You're not my son. Because did pick up on this game that they played and both really enjoy in the very beginning of the film. And uh, I do like how the attacks we don't really see. Like, he just goes into the kitchen, like, throws her off to the side, but the camera stays still. They're off screen. You hear her beating her up, and then she just kind of flies across frame. And then he takes her outside, buries her head in the ground, and then passes out. Because he was drugged. Well, I did... In the dream sequence, which is much earlier, it's just... Hit her making him lunch. Apologizing for being... If she's been strange. And he just, like, touches her face... And then he lifts up her bags. And she has this big scar. Hinting that she got it from her husband. And he's just like touching it. And then all of a sudden just digs right into it. And then she wakes up. It's not a bad dream sequence. But. it's If that's your only one. And that's your only real jump scare. Then I'll give it to you. But. You know. So she's able to pull her head out of the ground. She drags him down to the basement, um, locks him in there. He just starts giving out this banshee shriek. She runs out to the sinkhole, sinks into it, ends up down in the tunnels, finds the real Chris asleep down there, and there's just like this army of these like slick, blackish, faceless creatures. One of which there is this cool scene where it gets right up close to the camera and its mouth just CGI, but eh. they're, they're not real creatures. So again, I'll give it to you. And so she's just trying to drag the real Chris through these tunnels, which is done in a claustrophobic way. It, it is effective. And then just as she's about to get out to the surface, one has already uh, duplicated her. But she gets him out of the ground. Goes back to the house. Fake Chris is calling for Bobby. She just sets the house on fire. They leave. And then sometime later. It shows that she's gone back to school. And she's in their house or apartment. And she's taking these photos of him. Riding his bike, his face is still blurry. So she's wondering, do I still have my real son? And then it just pans out. We see that her, the whole apartment is just covered in mirrors. Because I guess your reflect, I don't remember exactly. I think your reflection will be blurred or something. So just to kind of play on the idea that now she's still constantly going to be living in fear over whether she has her real son or if he's been taken again. So that's kind of why I thought it was playing on the metaphor of, you know, like she's living with her son in the same kind of constant fear as someone who's living in an abusive relationship as she was. I don't know if that's what it was going for or just like a nice sort of 
cliffhanger ending that she's not fully over what happened. So, yeah, I mean, it's still a decent movie. It very well shot, still. Especially for the kind of movie it is. I will say... It, it might have not explored its themes to the fullest extent that it could have. This could have been a real, you know... It, it could have gone real heavy on the folk horror, which I would have really appreciated. Because there's not really a whole lot out there, especially modern films. I mean... There's Midsummer, The Other Lamb, Lamb, The Wind, that are all good. The Feast, which is excellent. Midsummer is my least favorite of all those. And for the most part, it does kind of feel like a generic, modern, just creepy kid movie or evil kid movie. But done much better than all of those. I mean, it is better made. And I am very thankful that even if changelings are the things that those creatures were, it didn't go into such a huge expository explanation or her even finding out what they are. She just kind of comes across them down in the tunnels and that's when she sees them. It's not like she researches and we get all those dumb cliched scenes. But... Story-wise and how it plays out, I think the thing it does do the best is showing the changes that this kid goes through. How he is at the beginning of the film, and then how different he gets, and how Sarah uses that to figure out that he's not hers. That he's someone or something else. I do think that is one of the better ways how it built its uh, suspense and, you know, scare factor like what makes it scary is this so yeah not one of my favorite a24 films by far uh well like into the forest i don't really feel right calling it an a24 film because it wasn't it's not a production just put out by them but even so even if it's only distributed it is still better made than many other films in the same genre so yeah, that's the last one I have for right now. I am going to be getting more soon. Uh, and then that's when I'll do collection videos, countdowns, and all that. So stay tuned for those. And I'm not sure when they'll be. Uh, probably within the next couple weeks or so. But uh, stay tuned for those. And uh, thank you for watching. Oh!